driverless trucks, and we're talking about big trucks. It's not just a fantasy on the drawing board now. Research is going full bore on how to achieve that goal. And as consumer investigator Steve Sprasia tells us, the trucking industry is already taking its first steps towards that goal. Tonight, he's digging deeper into the problems and concerns about fully autonomous trucks. The day is coming when that 18-wheeler rolling down the highway won't have a driver behind the wheel. It'll run autonomously, and that frightens some. And to me, you always need somebody driving. I mean, that's the safety of everything. Driverless trucks, you'd have more to worry about with the sensors. There'd be more sensors to default and mess up. We've already taken a number of steps in the direction of autonomous vehicles. In some places, tiny robot delivery units are running up and down sidewalks, bringing fast food and other items to customers. And in some places like Arkansas, delivery size trucks are running on secondary streets like these Walmart vehicles, hauling goods from one point to another without a driver sitting in the cab. They're on normal roads that, uh, that we use, but they're restricted to that middle mile operation, going from a fulfillment center or a distribution center to a store. So the routes are very well known and they're highly contained. The tests have begun. We're going to ride with it for a little bit and see what happens. But the day is coming when our highways will see driverless 18-wheelers like this next to your car and mine. There are different levels of vehicle automation, and it's divided into five categories. Level 1, driver assistance. It is a single automated system like cruise control. Level 2, considered partial automation, where the vehicle can steer and accelerate, and a human can take control at any time. Level 3, called conditional automation, where the vehicle can perform most driving tasks, but human override is still required. Level 4, high automation, where the vehicle performs all driving tasks under specific conditions, and human override is an option. And Level 5, full automation, the vehicle performs all driving tasks under all conditions, and no human interaction is required. This is a Cleavon Arc being tested in Texas right now to run on local roads and neighborhood streets with human oversight in a control center. Think of it as level four. The technology stack consists of um, uh, cameras, uh, radars, uh, GPS. Uh, uh, we have a 4G modem as well. This unit is designed to make deliveries for the so-called last mile from an item's last ship destination to your front door. There is a supervisor somewhere watching the screen, making sure that this thing does what it's supposed to do. Exactly. Uh, they, they monitor uh, fleets of autonomous robot carriers um, and they interact with the carriers. They can take full manual control at any point of time. We're trying to figure out what the optimal velocity is going to be. Professor Chris Vermillion of NC State says level two partial automation and level three conditional automation where drivers remain in a vehicle is more feasible right now given the current conditions. The driver has to be alert. That is well within the scope of what's available today in trucks and also passenger vehicles in terms of autonomy. And even though the Cleavon delivery arcs have a person supervising 10 of them at a time in a central control office, Professor Vermillion is worried about it. That system is going to be significantly more challenging because there are just so many routes from uh, a store to the end customer. There are self-driving systems like this where the lead truck is operated by a driver and the 18-wheeler following it is fully autonomous. Other companies are working on variations of self-driving 18-wheelers, but the problem is there are different regulations in every state with no central oversight. There needs to be either a, a very rigorous set of standards or a review board that's available. As autonomous technology improves over the next five years, experts say we're more likely to see the percentage of driverless trucks increase faster than driverless automobiles because for driverless trucks, the industry has a big cost savings at hand. Working for you, I'm consumer investigator Steve Frazier.